Hi, Doomy here. In this video, I'm going to fully explain how elemental damage is calculated in Punishing Grey Raven. Just a warning beforehand, this is pretty technical and while it's not complex, there's a decent amount of number crunching involved. With that said, I hope that with this video you can gain a basic understanding of how damage works and maybe gain a sense of why builds in PGR are what they are. To start off, I'll just show the full damage formula. If this block of text doesn't make sense at first, don't worry, because I'll go over each of the parts in detail. These are all the different categories that will contribute to the damage you deal. To start off, you have skill scaling, which is the percentage shown on the skill page of your character. As an example, we have Tenebrion here who has 635.29% scaling on his 3 ping. The amount of scaling on a skill is influenced only by the level of the skill, which would include memory resonances, such as this yellow orb resonance. There are some other scaling sources for elemental damage, like the four-piece effects of elemental memories. Heisen's Lightning Chain and Thunderstorm Bathlon's Corruption and Shakespeare's Burn are counted as skill scaling because they're not buffing your damage and are actually dishing out this percentage. Resistance reduction is a different part of the formula, and we'll get to that later. The next section is Character Base Attack, which is just whatever number is shown on your character's stat screen. Sources that will contribute to your character's attack are your character's level, ranks, evolution, weapons, memory resonances, and the 4th, 5th, 6th slot memories. Next we have Attack Increase. This is the first type of buff in this game. Anything that says they increase attack by a percentage is an attack buff. Some examples of this are leader skills like Astral's, or in memories with Da Vinci's two and four piece set effect, as well as the elemental two pieces. There's only one source of final attack in Global at the moment, and that is the first six star weapon resonance, Incandescence. In the future, pet attack increase will also be in this category. But first off, I've seen a lot of misconceptions about what the first weapon resonance actually does, and I'll say right now that incandescence is not plus 15% damage, or something like an extra 15% damage to your final hit of an attack. It's actually just an extra attack stat that is added after attack increase calculations. Also, although the description makes you think it's 15% of the weapon attack stat, it isn't. Since Peacemaker has 463 attack, 15% of that would be 69. But for some reason, Curl doesn't actually use the stat of a 6 star weapon, and just uses 500 regardless of the weapon. 15% of 500 is 75, so if you have a first slot 6 star weapon resonance, then final attack will be 75, elsewise it will be 0. Elemental damage is the second type of buff. This comes from a lot of sources, but anything that specifically states that it increases elemental damage with a percentage is in this category. To name a few, there are character leader skills, several memories, a lot of rank up passives, and weapons too. Warzone's stage bonus is also classified as an elemental damage increase. Extra damage bonus is the final type of buff. There are only three types of buffs. Usually, the description will say extra damage bonus, like it does here, but it doesn't always. And so, as a general rule when classifying buffs, if it's not an attack buff and it's not an elemental buff, then it has to be an extra damage bonus buff. For example, let's consider the most useful two piece set in the game. Condolina. Now, Condolina doesn't mention an attack increase, nor does it mention an elemental increase. 
Therefore, it's an extra damage bonus buff, just that it only applies to basic attacks. This type of buff can be found in a lot of different places, like your attacker class passive, weapons, memories, and several rank ups. The next part of the damage formula is resistance. Each enemy will have a base elemental resistance, which reduces their damage taken. There's no way to find out what this base elemental resistance is except by testing for yourself. With a few damage tests and rearranging the damage formula with algebra, you can find out this number. An enemy's resistance will be influenced by the following factors. Self buffs and debuffs, which you can see under the health bar, such as in Phantom Pain Cage. And then there's also tank abilities and memories, which will state if it reduces enemy resistance. The final factor is extra damage reduction, which functions similarly to resistance. It's a stat that the enemy has, and you'll also have to test yourself to find this stat. This is also influenced by enemy self buffs and debuffs, such as Closed Loop and Camus Destiny. There are only three ways to reduce enemy damage reduction, which is the tank class passive, the four set effect of Frederick, and the third six star weapon resonance, Matrix Lightning. Now that I've gone through all of the damage components, we can actually calculate damage. But before I start, I'm going to explain how to input numbers. For anything that is a percentage, you will convert to decimal. So for skill multipliers, you take this 635.29% and it becomes 6.3529. And character base attack, as I mentioned, is just whatever's on the stat page. So 1086 here. And then final attack, 75 if you have the first weapon resonance and zero if not. When it comes to buffs and debuffs, anything under the same category name is additive. So what do I mean by this? Let's say we're trying to find out what to input if we're calculating for Ember. We have 10% attack from the first part of our leader skill and 5% from the second. And then there's 3% from two-piece Shakespeare. And let's assume we also have both two-piece and four-piece Da Vinci active from an ally's QTE. And then finally, we have 12% from our 5-star weapon. These are all the same type of buff, which is attack increase, so you add them together, which equals 60%. Then you convert to decimal, and remember that the formula uses 1 plus attack increase, so you input 0 0.6 for attack increase. Elemental damage increase and extra damage bonus works the exact same way as attack increase, it's just additive. Resistance and extra damage reduction aren't really any different, except that they're subtracted from one instead of added. So if we have two-piece Einsteiner, two-piece Gloria, and four-piece Bathlon applied, and the enemy has 20% resistance, then you subtract everything from 20, making a total of negative 9% resistance. You convert that to decimal and then plug it in the formula. And of course, extra damage reduction would be done the exact same way. Something to note is that resistance and extra damage reduction can indeed go negative. Of course, theory should be verified in practice, so let's try an actual in-game example. A level 75 training dummy has approximately 23.4 elemental resistance and 3.6% extra damage reduction. Let's do the calculations beforehand to find out how much damage a single hit of Astral's ult should deal with this build during the Da Vinci window. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the numbers into the formula. Astral's ult has 564.71% scaling on each hit. Then we have 1459 base attack. I don't have a weapon reso, so zero for final attack. And then we have a total of 38% for attack increase, 37% for dark damage increase, 28.24% for extra damage bonus, 
and the final dark resistance will be 0.4%. Note that I won't be including Tenebrion's dark resistance shred on QTE, because it's only applied on the last hit, which means it won't be active while Da Vinci's buff is on. And then for extra damage reduction, it will be a final of negative 14.05. So our expected damage should be 22,691 for one hit when we have all these buffs up. Let's go see what it is in practice. It's a little bit hard to see, but the hit we were looking for came out to be 22,700 damage. Compared to our expected 22,691, it's only a 0.04% difference. Kuro does some rounding, so small differences are inevitable. Generally, I would say that as long as you're within 0.5% of the actual damage, then your calculation is correct. So in this case, 0.04% passes the test. If it's more than 0.5%, recheck your inputs because you probably added a number that shouldn't be there or forgot about something. So I was correct on the astral test, but let's do one more to confirm. And this time I'll do a weirder example. How much damage will four set Bathlon's corruption deal when it's equipped on Ember and has all our QTE buffs up? This time I'll just show all the stats and you can try calculating for yourself as practice. Note that not all of the buffs and debuffs that I show will apply, so carefully pick which ones to add into the formula. So now we'll test what it is in game. The moment we were looking for, which is when Da Vinci's four set effect was active, produced 2,945 damage. This is the damage formula that you should have gotten. Everything that I showed, except for Einstein and Eskimo's QTE, should have been applied. With this second test done, that should be sufficient to prove that this damage formula works. Hopefully, you can now understand elemental calculations and even do them on your own for further verification. In my next video, I'll either cover physical damage calculation or how to find true damage increases so you know how much you're actually getting out of buffs. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.